Vicente Luque, always a pleasure to catch up with you for joining us from Brazil. So thank you for that. Uh, just get into it, man. I mean, two months since that big, impressive win over Monte Piesa. What's uh, what's been going on in the meantime? Man? Are you enjoying a little time away, staying in the gym? What's what's going on? Yeah, uh, you know, I enjoyed a little bit of my time. I rested for about two weeks, but then got right back to training. Uh, it's hard for me to be too long away from training. I, I enjoy, you know, I have fun in every single session. And especially, I want to fight one more time this year. I think that I have it in me. I had no injuries in my last fight. I'm training really good every single fight. I feel like I'm evolving. So I want to still fight one more, hopefully December. That's awesome, man. We'll get into that. I did want to ask you, though, uh, I noticed you got your black belt in the meantime, right? I mean, uh, listen, I know you're chasing after world championships and all that, but uh, black belt's a pretty special moment, right? What, what did that mean to you? Yeah, it was really special because I got two black belts in the same day. Uh, I got my Luta Livre black belt and my Jiu-Jitsu black belt, so that was pretty awesome. And I've been training Jiu-Jitsu since I'm 16 years old. I'm 29 now, so that's a long time. And Luta Livre, I believe I started at 20, so also a long time. And, yeah, for me, it was an honor. I think that uh, I've been showing you, you know, I'm evolving on, on my ground game, my grappling. That's also one of my strong tools, my, my weapons. I don't show it all the time, but my last two fights, I showed that, you know, I, I can really hang with the best in the floor. That's awesome, man. Congratulations on that. Two black belts. That's even more impressive, <laughs> man. And I got to ask you, you came to Las Vegas also for USC 266. I wanted to ask you what that experience was like because, you know, we haven't had fans in a long time, right? So to be able to hang out with the fans, take pictures, sign autographs, and, and also – I got to think your popularity has to be higher than it ever has. I mean, did you get that feeling that, that people are really starting to, to know who you are and to support you in, in, in your journey? Yeah, I definitely felt that, you know, the, the fans support was really big this time and it was great to be with them, you know, spend time. It's nice to be able to hang out with them without having a fight, without, you know, thinking of, of my camp and whatever I got to do, just go out there, have fun, be a fan also, you know, and, and enjoy the fights. So it was a, a great experience. Got a lot of uh, good energy, good positive vibes of all the fans. And, you know, they like my style. So I try to give them uh, the big, the best show I can. And then I always get their retribution back. You know, they're, they're, they're always thanking me for that. And yeah, the fights were great also, you know, uh, especially that last one, Ortega with Volkanovski. It was a crazy fight. I mean, I was standing up all the time. I couldn't believe uh, Volkanovski got out of two submissions. Yeah, that was unbelievable. Yeah, it was a great night for sure. All right, so let's talk about your career, right? You you touched on it, you know, waiting to get a fight. You beat Michael Chiesa. Michael Chiesa's got a fight. What's what's going on here? Did, did you see that? Did that kind of offend you a little bit? Say, wait, I just beat this guy. Why is he fighting? I mean, it's, you know, so I was talking to, to my coach about that today. Uh, when we started our my career and I just got into the UFC, I thought like, okay, now I got to take every single fight. You know, there's not much that I can do. I cannot choose when I'm going to fight, who I'm going to fight. But I, w I thought in my mind, maybe when I'm up there, top five, top ten, I can pick and choose a little bit better, have a little bit more timing. But it's not what's ha going on, you know. I still am here, stuck. I have no fight, so I don't know. It's just uh, I think that it's hard, you know, with my style, sometimes it's hard to get a fight. You know, people, uh, I am number four right now. I know that there are maybe guys ranked lower that want to fight me, but I'm looking to fight guys that are going to propel me to that title fight. And those guys that can propel me, sometimes it's, it's hard to get them to fight, you know, because my style is dangerous. I know that they uh, – if they study me, they'll see it's not going to be an easy fight. Win or lose, it's not going to be a, an easy fight for anyone if they fight me. And I think that kind of makes it challenging. But at the same time, uh, I don't know. I, I have a big opportunity with Nate Diaz. He wants that fight. I want that fight. So, you know, I think I think that I couldn't ask for nothing better. Uh, to have a guy like Diaz wanting to fight me is, is awesome. All right, so that's what I wanted to ask you about for sure, right? Because he he retweets your quote. You know, he says, let's do it then. Let's go. Uh, what's the word, man? Like you said, you straight said, I think it'd be an amazing fight. You know, no disrespect. I just think it'd be a great fight. And he says, let's do it. To me, that's that's done. USA, Sean yeah. Shelby, Mick Maynard, Dana White, job done. Just send <laughs> the contracts out. So what's going on? I mean, when two guys want to fight, you know, you got to make them fight. What else, what else can you do about it? But 
Uh, I think that the UFC, you know, they ha got to figure some things out. I talked to my manager, Ali, and I let him know that I really want this fight. You know, I'll, I'll be ready in November, December, whenever they want to make it. I'm going to be ready. And we're trying to make it happen. I mean, I know Nate wants it as well. He's looking forward to fighting in December. So I think it, it makes sense. Whenever he wants to have it, I'm going to be in. Uh, I'm going to stay ready. And if, if it makes sense for the UFC, I think it does because, you know, it's it's a big fight. I might not be, you know, that trash talker, but I can fight. I can go in there and put on a show. So, guys, the fans are going to want to watch this fight whenever uh, I'm matched with somebody. They are going to watch it and match with a guy like Diaz. I think that's that's even better. So, yeah, I think it makes sense. I think the UFC can make this happen, and we'll see. I, I'm ready for him or for any other guy. You know, there's Leon Edwards. We don't know what's going on. Mazda is on, on that. Maybe he's going to, you know, Mazda is waiting on Leon. I don't know if that's going to happen. There is me. There is Gilbert also, so maybe he'll fight Gilbert, and we'll see what's going to go on. I'm going to stay ready. It, in my mind, the perfect card in December would be me and Nate Diaz and then Masvidal and, and Gilbert Burns. That would be on the same night. That would be awesome. Look, you're booking the whole division. You're not just booking yourself. You're booking everybody, man. Making the, 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 the matchmaker is always stressed out. You're making their job easy. So let, let me ask, do you, do you get the impression that the holdup is that they're waiting to see what happens in November with, with Usman and Covington before they make any moves? Is that kind of the feeling that you're getting? Yeah, I believe so. I think that's something that, you know, it's it's going to be a big difference. If Kamaru keeps on with the with the title, it's going to be one thing. Now, if Kobe takes that, it's going to be a whole different thing. A whole different fights are going to happen. So we got to see how it's going to play out. Uh, in my mind, I think Kamaru is going to win. You know, I, I would put him as a favorite for that fight, but we never know. We got to watch it. So... Yeah, maybe that's what's going on with the UFC. I want to stay ready. Right now, I'm training like if I were going to fight in December because if things play out the way I want to and they end up matching me, you know, with, with Nate Diaz and they only let me know in November, I'm going to, you know, get a head start right now and, and start training camp right now. Well, I mean, if you're training for a 10-round fight, you need some time to do that, right? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, that's, that's something. Uh, I'm actually willing to do it. I'll do it. You know how many rounds they want to go. Uh, I just have fun fighting. I've always had fun fighting. And my, usually I don't fight that long just because of my style. I'm able to finish it before. But whenever I fight three rounders, I have so much fun. Those are the fights that I, I most enjoy. My fight with Barbarina, for me, that's my favorite fight. I always talk to my coaches and they're like, man, how can you like that? You know, how can you enjoy being in a war like that? But I don't know. I have fun. I have fun on, on, on tough fights. You know, it's like... They, it takes out the best of me, and I like to be challenged. So, yeah, if, if we can go 10 rounds, I would have fun for sure. You're a madman. You're a mad. Listen, I, I'd love to see it. I think you and Nate would be a great fight. But let me ask you a question because you said it. You, you like Usman to keep his belt. Now, if he wins the title, do you feel like maybe you are the most deserving to jump in there with a, with, with a title shot? Because, you know, Leon Edwards is there, and he's been waiting, and he certainly has a great win streak, and obviously – he does, you know, you guys do have history. It's just several years back. But, I mean, do you feel like he has the inside track? Or if, if Usman wins, do you think maybe you should be the one to get the title shot? I think both of us, you know, both of us, we can make a case for that fight. Uh, obviously, Leon has the 10-win streak. Uh, he beat me in 2017. But he already fought Kamaru, and he got beat by Kamaru as well. So that's something, you know, uh, I think people want to see fresh blood against Kamaru, and that's what I am. You know, I'm a guy that is up and coming. I'm finishing most of my fights. You know, if, if not all of my fights, I, I only haven't got one finish in the UFC out of my wins. So uh, everybody knows that I'm a challenge to Kamaru. And, and at this point, I think that's what they want to see, somebody new that can go out there and, and really challenge the champion. So if Kamaru keeps the title, I think that I will be the perfect matchup. Not saying that Leon doesn't deserve it. I do think he does des uh, deserve it because of his win streak. But, you know, he's he has the opportunity to secure that by fighting Masvidal. And he chooses not to. That's also tough, you know. I'm a guy. I'm always active. So I think my activity can be rewarded in, in this situation. Nice. Is it the fight with Leon, is that one you want to get back at some point? Definitely. Man, I, I would love to fight him right now. You know, if December he would be available to fight, I would fight him. I mean, I think it's a fight where uh, in 2017, it was a tough fight. You know, I, I think I had the first round, then he beat me on the, uh, two, uh, the second and third. 
And I know that I can get that one back. You know, it was close. I had the first round. I, I made some, you know, bad decisions during the fight, not taking anything away from him. He beat me fair and square. And after that, he went on an unbelievable run. But I know that I'm a different fighter right now. So I definitely believe that I can beat Leon. No doubt. Well, listen, there's a lot of big fights on the table. Hey, I did want to ask you one outside of your career. Uh, I'm curious, uh, Tyron Woodley, did you watch him box? I mean, obviously you were his last fight in the UFC, and then he went on to to have this boxing match with Jake Paul. Did you did you watch that whole thing play out? And, and if, if so, what did, what did you think about it? Yeah, I watched it. Uh, I wasn't happy because, you know, I didn't want Jake Paul to win. But, at, you know, it's hard to judge boxing. In my mind, I had uh, Woodley winning that fight. Just because of you know aggression and the way he he made uh, Jake Paul walk back, but that's more of, of a MMA standpoint. You know, in MMA we try to put, control the octagon, put pressure, and really you know pressure their opponent, and usually that gives us the round. But in boxing sometimes it's different. We've seen in Mayweather he moves back all the time and he still wins all the rounds. So I mean it's it was tough. I, I gave it to Woodley, but it was a close fight. And I don't know. I, I, I did believe that Willie was going to knock him out. And I, I know that he has the power to. Uh, for, for one point there, for one moment, I thought, man, he's going to knock him out right now. And it didn't happen. So, yeah, it was a crazy fight. Uh, I, I didn't like the outcome. I wish Woodley had, had beaten him. But I don't know. Maybe we'll see that rematch. And if it happens, I think Willie is going to be way more aggressive and, and, and make sure that he doesn't, you know, get a, a bad decision and goes out there and finishes the fight. That was my thing. If he'd have fought the way he fought you, if he'd have fought that fight like that, I think he would be, clearly would have won the fight. I was hoping we'd see that guy. So I was the same as you. I was, you know, not that I'm cheering against anybody, but I still I wanted to see our guy win. I wanted to see the MMA guy win. You know, yeah, and I think sure. if he'd have fought like he fought you, he would have won. Yeah, I think I think we needed a little bit more aggression. You know, he had it on him. I think he ended the fight. He looked really like not not gassed at all. He was out there you know with a lot of energy a lot of power and he looked great in great shape so you know i think that i don't know sometimes we get stuck on some things when we get into a fight and we don't do what we thought we we're gonna do and then after uh we want to change things so that that's tough you know we got to go out there and and just uh do what we got to do and i believe that he could have knocked jake paul out but he did it maybe if they have a rematch that that will happen no doubt well Listen, we'll focus on you. Uh, November November sixth, I think, is a big night. So, so what do you do? do you you just you, you keep training like you're in camp, and then you hope you get an answer. Then, I mean, you're wanting to fight before the end of the year. Is there like a like a deadline that you have to know by when you know you're going to fight, and then at some point you just stop for a while, or what, what's the play? We just wait till you know UFC two sixty eight, and then we and then we hope that all the answers are known at that point. Yeah, I think that right now that's that's my plan. I'm I'm gonna keep on training as if I were gonna fight in December. And after Kamaru and Kobe uh, fight, I believe we're going to get a lot, a lot of answers after that. You know, maybe, maybe there is a slight opportunity I get that title fight, or, or you know, I, I get the Nate Diaz fight. We'll see what's going to go on. But in my mind, I feel like for me to be a hundred percent, you know, secure the title fight, one more win would be ideal. That's why I have my mind set on December. Uh, I want to fight one of these top guys, you know, Leon Masvidal. And Nate Nate would be the, the ideal fight for me, you know, because of his history, because of, you know, uh, he has a lot. He brings a lot, you know, and also his style. I enjoy his style. I think his style is a perfect matchup for me. And I'm a perfect matchup for him. And he wants that fight. So, you know, it's it's not a uh, it's not a no-brainer, you know, just go and make this fight happen. I think it's it's – there is no doubt in my mind that it was going to be a great one. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to think of this. I'm going to keep on training and hope that December I get a fight. I love it, man. I think it's a great fight. Look, you got to, once you're done fighting, man, you got matchmaking, you know, Sean Shelby, Mick Maynard, Vicente Luque, <laughs> UFC matchmakers. They got it all done, man. For sure. No, I would love to do that, man. I, I love watching fights and especially I love imagining how different fights would go on. You know, I think that, uh, styles make fight and and when you match two good guys uh me and nate is like fight of the year potential you know it's it's a fight that a lot of people especially like my style a lot of people thought that my fight with kiesa would be a boring one 
And I knew like, I, I don't have boring fights. There's no way that's going to happen because I'm going to make it exciting in some kind of way. I don't know how it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. And at the end of the night, it was a great fight. So, you know, it's, it's just my style. When I get in there, I, I bring the action and I, I'm going to entertain. Awesome, man. Well, glad to hear your training, staying ready. And like you said, I think after USC 268, we're going to get a lot of answers. And the good news is, no matter what your next fight is, it's going to be a big one. There's no question about it. I mean, we're talking about the very top of the division. So uh, we'll have something to look forward to, hopefully, by the end of the year. We know it'll be a big one. So uh, best of luck, Vicente. I appreciate it. Congrats on the black belts. And uh, we look forward to it. We'll wait till 268, I guess. Then we look forward to hearing the fight news. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Appreciate it. And let's go. Hopefully, December, I'll be in action again.